Welcome to Perspectives El Paso. I'm Professor Leon Blevins, Professor of Government at El Paso Community College. Now I know that today I don't look like a professor at community college, I look like a sheriff of Frontier El Paso. And how this comes about is in the spring of 1999, I opened the El Paso Times one day, and I noticed a little article there that was about something called Concordia Heritage Association. And the membership there was looking for some historical reenactors that could portray people buried at Concordia Cemetery. And it listed a telephone number. And as an actor, I called that number, talked to a woman named Georgia Pettit, and volunteered for her program. And she assigned me to be a Texas Ranger, Carl Kirshner. So I did Carl Kirshner that year and the next year, and then I passed off that assigned role to a son of mine named Timothy Blevins. And then I became James H. White, Sheriff of Old El Paso County. And I have with me a special guest today who knows more about the Concordia Heritage Association than I do. I became a member in 1999. I have with me Dean Underwood, who for many years taught history in the Esoleta School District. Dean, welcome to Perspectives El Paso. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. I know you've been on many television shows here in El Paso and interviewed about this particular subject. Were you an original founding member of Concordia Heritage Association? I joined about 93. Okay, now one of the members that helped start it, I interviewed not long ago, uh, Leon Metz. Yes. A uh, well-known um, historical writer of Western histories, and I believe that you've written about him. Yes, I wrote his biography. Uh, okay, tell us a little bit about, about the events that are used to raise money for Concordia Heritage Association. Well, mainly there are two of them. One of them is John Wesley Harden, his anniversary of his demise every August the 19th. And we go out and drink a toast on his grave and have a little fundraiser there. It costs a few dollars to get in. And we have pro door prizes and we do a reenactment of uh, events that led up to his killing and then uh, when John Selman kills him. Okay, and a lot of people watching are new to El Paso and they don't know who John Wesley Harden is. He was a famous uh, gunfighter, right? Yes, probably the most deadly of all time. He killed over 44 men. And he wrote his own autobiography. <laughs> He's the only one who did. Okay. And he ended up a, a lawyer here in El Paso and a very infamous character. And although he was only here four months, he never killed anyone while he was in El Paso. He threatened to, but, <laughs> but he didn't okay. kill anyone. So he's <laughs> the one that most tourists, when they come here, are looking to find the gravesite. Yes, and it's very easy to find as you walk in the Yendel Gate. It's in a cage, kind of, uh, wrought iron edifice over to the left. I have Concordia, a walking tour, and uh, it's a little book that you can use to guide yourself through Concordia step by step, starting at the Yandel Gate. And in the back, it has uh, a map and an index to help you, okay. which is very nice. And uh, so this would show you where the famous and infamous people are buried. Yes, sir, it does. You know where all the skeletons are, right? Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> We're discovering new ones all the time. Now, I understand that you are in charge of research. Is that right? You do, a, a people yes, sir. call you and they ask about doing research and where to find the bodies? Yes, if they want to find their great-great-grandfather, we have the records so we can look them up and help them find them. Oh my goodness, find the grave. that is fascinating. This, our oldest and most historic cemetery, is located on Yandale and between Copia and what other streets? Uh, Stevens. Stevens, Stevens Street. Stevens is, is one on the left and, and uh, then the freeways on the uh, kind of on the oh, right. Yes, it's close to where the spaghetti, what we call the spaghetti, spaghetti bowl, bowl is yes, located. Sir. That's so right. The people that. are looking for it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, tell me a little bit about uh, walk through history. The walk through history is every Oct uh, third Saturday in October. Okay. And uh, it's probably eleven to three, about in there, and you just bring some comfortable shoes for walking and and some water and maybe a hat or, mm -hmm. or a parasol. And we have ghosts standing beside the graves in costume. And in first person, they s say, when I was alive, I did such and such right. and such for El Paso. And finally, this is how I died. And um, it's, it's very thrilling to hear the true life stories of people, the good, the bad, and the ugly, <laughs> right? buried there. That's right. Well, as I mentioned, I portray James H. White. Now, you had something to do with getting a state historical marker placed at the gravesite of the character that I portray. Tell us how you did that. Yes. 
Well, uh, you fill out forms from Austin, and you have to do research on his life, that he deserves this, and he did. He was, he served in three armies. He was the youngest in the Confederate Army, barely 15. Right. And he served in the U.S. Army, the Mexican Army, and sheriff several times in El Paso. And uh, in fact, he, s he was sheriff when they had the uh, first legal hanging in San Elizario in El Paso County, and he presided over that. Yeah, he served with the Mexican government, the Confederate government, the U.S. government, El Paso County government as sheriff, the city of El Paso, a city police chief, ran for mayor and was defeated. That's right. So he's worthy of a historical marker, but when people come to the cemetery, they don't come looking for him. No, they don't. <laughs> Usually the good ones they kind of overlook. They want to see the infamous ones. Okay, now but there's also a historical marker with John Wesley Harden. Right. You want to say anything about that? Well, Leon Metz was instrumental in getting that one done, mm -hmm. and he wrote the text for that one. So uh, uh, it, 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 it is under lock and key most <laughs> of the time, except when we have these events, then you can go inside and, and actually have your picture taken at the grave. Yes, yeah, some people kept stealing the grave marker. Yes. Uh, some people in another community even brought lawsuit to try to get the body moved to their city. That's Nixon, Texas, which <laughs> did not exist in 1895 when Hardin was alive, and now they, they wanted the body. But we have about four inches of concrete uh, uh, over his grave. It'll be very difficult to steal, and also he's in jail again. There's a cage <laughs> built around him that can be unlocked yes. and opened when we have the events. That that's right, there. that's right. Well, this is fascinating to, to look at this. And this is a part of El Paso history. And I interviewed some of the Concordia members and others earlier, uh, Patricia Kidney and uh, Bernie and Melissa Sargent about yes. heritage mm -hmm. tourism right. to try to get people to come and see what we have in El Paso, so that's a part of it too. Well, you know, when I was doing the book, most of the times I was out in Concordia, someone came up to me and said, can you tell me where John Wesley Harden's buried? And one day I was out there and this white limo comes up and I thought, oh no. And this German pokes his head out and he says, can you tell me where is the grave of John Wesley Harden? <laughs> and so I took him over there with all his friends and showed uh, him Harden's grave and, and talked to him. That's before we had it marked so well. Yes. Well, I've taken a famous pianist that come here for the Chopin Festival out there to see it, and they're kind of surprised. They've never heard of this kind of thing. And some people come to El Paso thinking we're still an old frontier town, the stereotype of which we're not. Now, we also have some uh, cups here uh, yes. for sale, so it's a fundraiser. Yes, it is. We have a Hardin cup and uh, a Concordia cup. And I wrote the text on the back of those, okay. and uh, those are for sale as long as as well as um, some items that we have in a general store. Mm -hmm. They're usually old-fashioned items that you can buy, costumes and things like that. That's in the walk through history. In the walk through history. So we're always looking for donations and things. Now I'm going to give a telephone number. In fact, I'm going to give my telephone number: nine one five eight three one twenty five zero three. That's my office number. So if someone wants to call my office number, then I will tell you whatever year that you call me, uh, who is in charge of it. Now you're in charge of it this year. This year it's 2008. Yes. And you're setting this up. And now in the past, my wife and I have set up the John Wesley Harden dinner. And you, have you done those? Have yes, you set I up? have done that. Okay. And if anyone would like to portray a part, we'd appreciate you calling me, 915-591-6066. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be nice. So they have a couple of numbers there, so if they want to get connected, if they want to participate, and we have a place for them, even if they don't portray a character, they could come and serve in a variety of ways. Oh, yes. Uh, in any of these events. And yes, we, we always need help, and, and it is so much fun. We have the Bowen Ranch train out there going round and round, taking people for rides mm -hmm. for free. Okay. And uh, we have uh, sometimes cowboys out there bring their horses and ride around. And we have buffalo soldiers and little guys, the warriors and the victory warriors, then uh, they march around and it's, it's really nice. We have a buffalo soldiers section. Mm -hmm. We have the only Chinese section in Texas. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, in those days it was very segregated, the cemeteries. Oh, yes. Yes. They, besides the black and the Chinese, they have the Protestant, the Catholic, the Masonic, the Jewish. Um, the, the, good odd fellows, fellows, odd fellows, the odd fellows, yeah, the odd fellows. Yeah. Yes, all kinds of things. Uh, they just kept to themselves, <laughs> and you had to be buried in your section. Now, some of the people, the most famous people, the madams, uh, they're not buried in Cor Concordia. No, they're not. They're buried over in Old Evergreen, 
like Tilly Howard, the one I play, portray okay. this year, okay. as she's buried in Old Evergreen. And that's over on Alameda Street? On Alameda Street. All right. And one of our Texas Rangers is buried over there, Bass Outlaw. In fact, there are four Texas Rangers buried there. And there's a former president of Mexico that is buried there. Yes, Victoriano Huerta is buried there. Okay, and there was another one, Orozco, who I believe his body was taken back to Mexico. Right, for years they lay in state in the vault in the Masonic section in Concordia. Mm -hmm. And then Mexico decided that Orozco would be a hero, and they moved his body back to Chihuahua <laughs> City and he was buried with honors. Mm -hmm. But poor Huerta had to stay on this side. He was decided to be a traitor, mm -hmm. and so he's buried in Old Evergreen. So there's so much history right here that people do not know about. Oh, That's yes. Perspectives tons. El Paso. We get a different view of things here. A lot of history. Right. And we give tours out there. We have tours the first Saturday of every month, and uh, Henry Flores does that. And there is a, a fee, but uh, you can call me and I'll give you the information and he will do a tour for you. Uh, they're kind of like ghost tours, okay, too. Okay. So this is very, very interesting. People are really interested in that, the supernatural. Okay, now I mentioned that at one time I portrayed uh, Carl Kirshner, the Texas Ranger. There are a number of Texas Rangers, and I understand that you've been researching some of these, and they just found a gravesite of one of the Texas Rangers. Is that correct? That's true, that's true. We just found Pat Nolan, and he's buried in Concordia. And he was a Texas Ranger, too, in Company D. Mm -hmm. Company D was the part of the Frontier Battalion out here in West Texas. And besides Carl Kirshner, who we call the Coca-Cola Cowboy because he owned part of Magnolia Coca-Cola Bottling Company, right. as you well know. Right. But he was with um, Captain Jones when he was killed in Isleta. And um, he had many bullet wounds all over him, but as you want to tell us how he died? Well, he, he contracted a disease, uh, a typhus was it? Yes. By going over into Juarez when some of the people were being shot there and he was helping bringing bodies back to El Paso and he caught a disease. He wasn't shot dead in a shootout. He died from a disease. Right. But one that was shot dead in a, in a shootout was Ernest St. Leon. Now he was an undercover ranger and he worked for the Shafter Mining Company. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Captain Jones uh, didn't like him because he drank and he got rifted out of the, of the Rangers for a while. But the first thing after Captain Jones died, and Kirshner was there, remember, um, he reinstated Ernest St. Leon as an undercover agent in the Shafter Mine so that they could get the silver ore thieves arrested. And he did an excellent job, and in fact killed two of them himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Von Oden was with him. And Odin was a ranger here in El Paso too, but he he died here, but he is buried in Marfa. But Odin was a different kind of ranger. He he wrote beautiful poetry and kept a diary, and it was it's just a, a beautiful thing to read some of his poetry. Oh, that's fascinating too. Now then, tell us a little bit about the origins of Concordia Cemetery. It was a, a ranch. Yes. And uh, tell us about the first person who was buried there. Well, that was Juana Scarate de Stevenson, and she was the wife of uh, Stevenson who, who owned the ranch, and was called Stevensonville mm -hmm. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it was a crossroads to Alamogordia, or you could go down uh, to East Texas there, or you could go over to Mexico, or even to Las Cruces. It was just a kind of a crossroads. Mm -hmm. And um, she would feed travelers, and she would take them in. She was a very kind-hearted person, but one day she had a pet deer and she was feeding him and he gored her. And so she died a couple of days later of the wound and she was the first person buried in Concordia. And her location is well known. Yes. And, and visited from time to time. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh -huh. Any other uh, fascinating individuals you'd like to tell us about? Oh, yes. Well, there was one and he, we've discovered him recently and his name was Glenn Witt. We were out there uh, honoring his mother, who was a daughter of the Republic of Texas, which I am a member of, mm -hmm. and we put a medallion on her grave. And I said, what's that big obelisk next to her? And they said, oh, that's her son. He was hanged for murder. So we were so proud uh, at that moment, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> found a murderer. <laughs> found a murderer right next to her. So the, he was, he is an interesting character. We have, um, Besides that, we have a fellow who wrote Pat Coughlin with Billy the Kid. So we have uh, 
a kind of an outlaw in that way. We have a lot of the infamous judges, Judge Crosby, who said he was the first uh, Anglo child born in El Paso. We have his, um, next to him, we have the Mundys. Now the Mundys own Concordia at one time. Now we own them, they're uh -huh. buried there. Right, right. <laughs> but he owned a, a quarry and Dieter was uh, commissioner of roads and he saw something glinting in the sun and the gravel and he went and scooped it up and took it over and had it analyzed at the assayer and and they found out it was gold. So some of the streets in El Paso are literally paved with gold, at least flecks of it. Oh my goodness. So these little stories, uh, trivia, mm -hmm. uh, it are so interesting. Everybody buried out there, about 65,000 people, have a story. And uh, in my book I have about 50 of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, j of course John Selman's buried there, the one who killed uh, John Wesley Harden. Mm -hmm. We call him Wes Harden. And uh, so he's another famous character that people want to see his grave, and definitely when right. they come. When I, I walk through history, we have not only people that are buried there that are portrayed, uh, you now have people that are portrayed who are not buried there. Yes. Such as Billy the Kid and Pancho Villa, so that people that do come through in October at Walk Through History, they can also hear those stories. Right. Billy the Kid came through El Paso. Pancho Villa visited El Paso very often. We even have, even have pictures of him eating an ice cream cone downtown. His favorite food. <laughs> right. And Pat Garrett was customs collector in El Paso for four years. Mm -hmm. We have him portrayed. And we have a lot of people who were Western and in and out. Calamity Jane was married in Juarez to uh, Mr. Burke, and he was a hack driver in El Paso. So we have right. all these characters who are in and out of El Paso, and they get to bo be portrayed also. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else about, say, the organization? Tell us a little bit about the organization. We try to improve Concordia Cemetery. We try to take care of it, and we've had a lot of help from the probation department doing this. But we had volunteers. We even had the National Guard, the Boy Scouts for Eagle Scout projects, mm -hmm. and uh, we've put in curbing and a lot of gravel work. Our s our streets have been graded, and so there are no more potholes in there anymore. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, street lights and sidewalks. And lately, we've had shelters and benches, and also you are there signs and section signs, so people can find graves more easily. Right. Well, I know I've been on the board and I have served as vice president of the organization and there's always a need for help, always a need for money. Tell us about some of the funding besides these projects to raise some money because it's an expensive thing. Tell us about some other of the money. Well, the El Paso County gives us a certain amount every year that we have to work with, but it's not all free. We have to match the funds. In other words, we have to uh, send them a bill and spend the money for certain objects in certain categories mm -hmm. uh, and they have to approve it and so this is how we spend our money and thanks to them we've gotten those beautiful antique street lights out there mm -hmm. and some other projects that are just wonderful that we, we couldn't have done new gates wrought iron gates we couldn't have gotten without their help. And it's through the county also that we have the probation department that has the probationers come out and help repair things, right? lift the, the torn down tombstones and things of this nature. Yes, they've raised a lot of tombstones and not only that, they re removed graffiti off the stones. Mm -hmm. And we had that big flood three in, oh, yeah. in L5. Uh, we even had coffins exposed and they filled them in. And uh, then the weeds grew well, almost oh, to six feet awful. tall. That was and a they, big job. they had a big job uh, taking all the weeds out. But it looks beautiful. It really looks nice. Well, I'm sure you've had the same experience I've had talking to some of the probationers because we have a party for them once a year. Yes, we do. And some of them will say, you know, I grew up doing all kinds of bad things. And here I'm now doing something positive. And they go around and take pride in that. And even after they serve their time of probation, some of them come out there and show their family and friends what they have done. Right, and continue working yes. in their spare time. Yeah. They're out there Wednesday morning and Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Well, with regard to the organization also, tell us about elections. You have elections to choose your members uh, to serve these offices. No, on the board. Yeah. yeah, they're nominated every October and we have the elections. So about the time that, that walk through history is taking place. Right, okay. right. Tell us about your roles. Have you always portrayed the same character? 
Oh you, no, I've played Madame May Palmer. I played uh, my favorite character out there who's buried in the Sonic, and that's Alzina Orndorf de Groff. Okay. And she is known as Mama D. And Mama D had a hotel downtown, the Vendrome. And her dream was to have a high rise hotel. And so she borrowed a million and a half dollars on her own name. Well, what year was that? Which, uh, which was way back in the 20s. And oh it, it, it was impossible for a woman, but much, you know, it, a million it really dollars was. in that time. Even yeah. for a man, it yeah. would have been difficult. But she did it. And, and the Cortez Hotel is still standing. That's her hotel. And it's uh, 10 stories high. And that was a big skyscraper in those days. Right. And uh, she, bless her heart, she was inspecting it two weeks before it was opened. And she expected the first steam heat in El Paso and got overheated. And we had the first hydraulic air uh, elevators in El Paso. Mm -hmm. But anyway, she died of pneumonia two weeks before it opened. And her son, Seth Orndorf, who's also buried in Concordia, had to open the hotel for her. Another one that we have heard about, and I don't know of a lot of people going over to find the grave site, was a person that was known as uh, America's tallest man, and he was yes. in a circus for a long time, that's a movie star. Right, that's Jake Ehrlich, and he's buried in the Jewish part, and he was um, eight foot six and a half inches, and uh, he, the Barnum and Bailey Circus came through town, and he went to see it, and he was looking down at the tall man, <laughs> and they said, do you want a job? And he said, sure, and so he went all over the world with them. But when they came to El Paso, he would not uh, portray, he would not be in the circus because he said he didn't want to embarrass his family mm -hmm. who lived here. Mm -hmm. And he was in the sideshow and people would point and say, look at the freak, and he didn't want oh. them to be embarrassed. But he was a kind-hearted gentleman, loved to dance. He was uh, about 43 when he died. They, they don't live very long, mm -hmm. and um, he, which was a long time for a giant. Mm -hmm. um, and he drove, before that, he drove his um, Dodge from the back seat. He had the front seat taken out mm -hmm. because of his long legs. Very unusual. Uh, say a word about the Chinese section. You mentioned that the t Chinese section is unique in Texas cemeteries. Right. We had so many buried there because they worked on the Southern Pacific Railroad. Came through in 1881, and uh, so many of them died of different reasons. Now, some of their bones have been sent back to China if they wished it so, but some stayed in El Paso, and a lot of them are unmarked, right. and, but some of them are. We even have a veteran of the Korean War in there, and um, they would have elaborate funerals, and they would have the McGinty Band come out and play loudly, and, uh, and they would have a red dragon weaving through, and they would give out candies and uh, coins for good luck. And uh, I asked them one time in the Chinese Benevolent Society, uh, did they mind us performing out there and shooting guns in front of the Chinese cemetery where Hardin is buried? Mm -hmm. And they said, oh no, the noise will scare <laughs> away the evil spirits. That's, <laughs> the, that's good. <laughs> now right next to the Chinese cemetery is a section known as the Mormon section. Right. Any words about that? Well, Mrs. Pierce was uh, the wife of a uh, Mormon leader. They were run out of Mexico by Pancho Villa and uh, were survivors. And she had uh, several sets of twins, and uh, she used to be portrayed uh, making her own homemade soap and uh, bread, and, and she would pass out samples mm -hmm. there. But one of the Eagle Scouts from the Mormon Boy Scout Troop restored that area, uprighted all the stones, oh, put in the gravel, put in the, the curbing, and now they have a marker there uh, that tells the history of the Mormons who came to El Paso. Now there are a few African Americans buried in the cemetery. Did they have a separate section? Yes, on the right, as you come in the Yandel section, you have the Buffalo Soldiers and you have a lot of blacks. Still an active cemetery, we still have burials. And uh, Not too long ago we had a burial out there in the black section. And um, just the other day we had a burial of uh, Father Manny Cabral over by Father Pinto mm -hmm. in the Jesuit section. Mm -hmm. And he used to portray Father Pinto. Very nice gentleman and he'll be missed. Oh. Well in recent years uh, street signs have been put up. Uh, names have been assigned to these streets so that people can find their way. The maps now are available. And you said you are here uh, these kinds of signs that people can find their way through the cemetery. Now I know that people that are watching this program to think today this is just a program on history. It's not, it's also about government, society, culture, religion, 
so many things that are tied up. And you know what's interesting is the cemetery kind of levels us all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> doesn't matter whether they built Everybody's a, equal in death. <laughs> everybody is equal. It <laughs> doesn't matter whether they built a high-rise hotel or whether they were famous for this or that, infamous murders or whatever. That cemetery kind of levels us all out. Well, we have just a couple of minutes left. Any last words that you'd like to share with our audience? Perspectives El Paso. We are so proud of the Concordia Heritage Association and what they're doing and what their probationers are doing to preserve this historic landmark. Uh, every cemetery should be preserved. And right now I'm in a project to uh, mark Texas Rangers graves. And we have found about 13 buried in El Paso. Mm -hmm. We want to get those marked especially. So we would like to have help. And if you know of a Texas Ranger who's buried in El Paso, <laughs> please let me know. Find the Texas Ranger. <laughs> also, that brings to mind, we need to thank the El Paso Sheriff's Department because that falls under their jurisdiction and they've done so much for us. And of course, we have the uh, graffiti artists that go out there and they vandalize and so on. And so we do appreciate the law enforcement that we have and the cooperation have when we have the shootouts in the cemetery. Yes, we do. Because we have the, the firing of these weapons and the neighbors or some people aren't familiar, they're driving down the street and hear the firing and it's the Sheriff's Department that helps us with some of this. But they're all blanks. <laughs> yes, the firing in the cemetery, we use blanks. In fact, Ken Smith is the one that checks the weapons to make yes, sure we don't have anything gets in there that could cause harm or damage to it. So if you come to Walk Through History, or John Wesley Harden shootout. Now that's on the 19th of August every year, right? Yes, sir, it is. And walk through history the third Saturday of every year. So if you come, don't be afraid. Enjoy yourself and keep your eye on what's happening in El Paso. Thanks once again, Dean. Thanks for being with us today. My pleasure. And thanks to you, the audience, for watching once again Perspectives El Paso. We'll see you on another program.